this show is going to be about, it's going to be about Donald, former President Donald Trump and present, the present President Joe Biden. And you know what? We have to sit down and examine them. We have an election that is coming up in November 2024, but we are in Chicago, Illinois, in the United States of America, and you are welcome to call in if you want to Jo want to join the broadcast there's a website link where you can join the broadcast if you have a question that is in the chat room oh thank you brother thank you all praises to the god thank you brother g g5 i appreciate it. I appreciate it because what you're doing is you know what you're helping the underground railroad to facilitate to get more information out there to the people by buying more thing. i appreciate it. appreciate it and if you have a question, let me know. And the thing is, um, what we're going to be doing is talking about, actually, we, we, we'll we get into talking about the United States of America, but we're going to talk about the president. Who is Brad better for the United States of America? Do you think that President Joe Biden, okay, even though he has lost some of his faculties. Hey, I'm losing some of my faculties. I put my pen down and I forgot where I put it a couple minutes ago. I'm talking about right after I walked in the door. Okay. So we all losing our faculties. Say I've slipped and fell. Okay. The uh, thing, you know, with the video that they show over and over and over um, um Joe Biden just slipping while he was walking down um F4 Air Force One for to fly the president around. Or do you think that Donald Trump, that he has the right temperament to be the president of the United States again and win a second term? He just lost a lawsuit. And you know what? I'm talking to a whole lot of people, a whole lot of people. And you know what? I, I'm not surprised because there are people out there that I have spoke to. The black vote, for example, there are, there are people that are starting to lean towards former president Donald Trump, okay? Now, this did not happen, okay? I, you got, I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate G5. Thank you. And you know what, Matt, and I appreciate, you know, and, um, uh, Johnny, 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 how you doing, my brother? I'm doing well. Okay, you can hear me. You can hear me. We're up from out of Chicago, and Johnny has his own show. And you know what? Please make a quick introduction of yourself, then we'll get on down with Donald Trump, because you know what? People, I'm finding out on YouTube, they don't like to hang on too long. But go ahead, brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm Prophet Johnson of the Joyful Sound Truth and Conversation. And... Um, yeah, so you can find me on the Joe for Sound Truth and Conversation I, on the YouTube platform and on a every major podcast platform. Okay. And you know what, brother? I for people that just that are just tuning in, we're going to be talking about Donald, former President Donald Trump and Joe Biden. I gotta I gotta ask Johnny and the listening audience out there, you know what? I am surprised there are people, there are people that are gravitating towards former President Donald Trump. Okay. They're gravitating towards. Okay. I think Joe Biden is a nice guy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> let me let me tell y'all something. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna have some fun. Some be fictional, some will be non-fictional, but we're gonna have fun with this problem. Let me ask you something, Johnny. When you sit down. And your list, the listening audience out there. Let me ask you something, oh man. When you really, really sit down and look at the presidential race that's coming up in November for year 2024, which you will be able to use this tape, use this video in cyberspace when you while you in the future to look at what we was going through in 19, two, 19 year 19, 2024. Okay, so somebody's taping this. Johnny, I want to ask you, when you really, really, really sit down, and we can't even see you, when we really, really sit down and look at it, okay, you, who, who do you, what, what do you think about President Joe Biden 
And I'm going to tell what I think. He tell us we're gonna start with since he is the president of the United States. We're gonna start with him. Who do, what do you think about him, brother? <clears throat> he is of I don't know, man. Um, how do, that's a lot of thoughts I have about him. Mm -hmm. But uh the one that stands out is that he's very arrogant. Who Joe Biden? Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, I'm listening. That's it. Arrogant. You think that Joe? You think that Joe Biden is arrogant? I don't. Know. You know what? You know what the good thing about this show is. You know what? We agree to disagree, and that's good. I. Oh, you know oh, what? Oh, so I, now you like Joe Biden? No, I'm not. I'm not going to say. I, I yeah, I love. I love mankind, but um, I think that um, President Joe Biden. I think that Joe Biden in a sense he is like a likable he's a likable person he is not bombastic okay bombastic it's not bombastic um, now, I'm, I'm talking about what i'm saying in the public okay because i think i think he is well, why would you say that brother uh so he was on the news the other day Mm -hmm. Talking about apparently he's against the Second Amendment, mm -hmm. and so he he's he rather I don't know how to how to put this, but he I was I guess slighting people who own assault rifles. Okay, and okay. and he and he said that kind of smugly that that's not what you need you need a f-16 not a ar-15 the nra go ahead bro that was a bit bombastic right there mm -hmm. i don't see you know what i don't see me myself now the people that are listening out there i don't see joe biden as a evil a pessimistic man, what I see him. I think because he is one reason when you know what it's up to the American people, it's up to you to choose who the next leader of the free world will be in the United States of America. I see Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, I see him as a nice man to a certain extent. And you know what? But I think one of the things, and that's that's it for you and everybody out there. He is losing his faculties. And you know what? We are all losing our faculties. All of us are. What do I mean by faculties? I'm talking about his thinking ability. In other words, well, this happened to me. I laid down my pen. See this pen ring? I laid it down. And you know what I say, man, I'm getting ready to write down something Johnny said to take a note. And you know what? I forgot right where I put the pen. I've laid my phone down. Okay. I've laid my phone down. Couple, couple seconds and forgot exactly where, what, 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 where, where the phone was. Hey, you are listening out there in cyberspace. You've done it too, or you might do it. What do you think about that? He's losing his faculties. You know well, I mean? that's okay for you because you're not president. <laughs> okay, okay. So you saying is wait a minute, wait a minute, man. Prophet John said, I have to ask you something. Would, would you say that that's, that's not for all of us? Once, what's that? Once a man and twice a baby. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I understand the concept. Okay. You understand the concept. So Joe Biden is doing that, but we're all losing our faculties as we agree. Who, what about the people out there? Do you think that you're going to lose your faculties to think? Okay, but what you what you what you're saying, Johnny? I, I could you elaborate on what you said? You said he's the president of the United States. Could you elaborate on that, brother? Uh, I'm saying that it's it's okay for you to be the average Joe, <laughs> if I might say. It's okay to be the average Joe, and you're losing your faculties because you know we can. How can I say we can 
accommodate that. You know, we can support that. We have ways that we can mitigate that. But when, as the presidents normally say, and I'm sure he said at one point, and the buck stops here. So when you're the, where the buck stops, you're the final decision maker. That's what he says. Uh, you know, and and he has a lot of decision making powers. And we, yeah. when you, and his decisions affect billions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for him, I would say it's it's not it's not good. So so even though all of us are going to lose our faculties, but you say right because all of us ain't president. Of, because of the position that he is, you're saying that he makes makes decisions that will affect many people's lives. Billions. Him and the Congress and him being the leader. Uh, okay, okay, okay. But you know, when you when you really when you really really um sit back and look at former President Donald Trump. OK, do you think that he has the proper temperament? He, does he have the proper temperament to be the United, be the president of the United States of America in the Republican Party? He appears to be the leader of the Republican Party. And um, does he have the proper, I, what do you think? He got the proper temperament? <laughs> Donald Trump. I don't I can't think of anything he has the temperament for. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, yeah, I can hardly think of anything that I would say, yeah, he has the temperament for that. Mm -hmm. I you know, <laughs> now you know what I got done to play the devil's advocate here. I gotta play the devil's advocate. I got to, you know, because you know, facilitating this conversation, you know what I have to play the devil's advocate. You know, and the thing is, I think in a sense he does have the temperament. Now, I mean, when he he's quite passionate, he's quite passionate about I don't know where he went at, but you know what? He's quite passionate and mad about the president not making America first, making America first. He's mad about that. He's mad. That's part, really. of this, that's part of his temperament, okay? He is mad about that. Is is former President Donald Trump, I'm not saying who I'm for, because you know what, I'm trying to facilitate this conversation, okay? But the thing is, how, in, in terms of temperament and him loving the United States of America, is that the right temperament? To say, you know what, damn it, we're not going to put China first. We're not going to put... Um, and say Russia. We're not going to put these other countries first. We're going to put the United States of America first. Is he wrong for that, brother? Is he wrong? Yes, he's wrong in that he's not putting America first. He's putting Donald Trump first. How's he, putting, how's he doing that, man? He stood up on a podium and said, he said, I'm not just fighting it. I'm just not fighting for myself. I'm fighting for you. So explain that to me, bro. You should have him explain what he said to you. <laughs> because it's very obvious he's fighting for Donald Trump. Because if he wasn't putting Donald Trump first, he would have followed the thing that the only thing that can make America great. Because if America is has any greatness mm -hmm. or if any nation has any greatness mm -hmm. I think the best that they can do to demonstrate that greatness mm -hmm. is thank you thank you God Pop thank, it, you. It, thank it you very much is through mm -hmm. continuity yes right so uh so when you have continuity and stability that's the mm -hmm. greatest thing that a nation can do and what we have in place to ensure that is the peaceful transfer of power which is the <laughs> very fundamental of our political system and he couldn't even do that 
Okay. Now, wait a minute, man. You know, I was looking at um, um George Stephanopoulos uh, on Channel 7, on Channel 7 ABC News, and Martha Raddick, who I think was a great interviewer. If he asked a panelist uh, of three people that said that they are going to support former President Donald Trump, and I think they may have voted for him, and they believe. They believe, okay, they believe that that race was stolen, that it was systematically taken. I don't know if it was, I'm not going to say what my pew, but I'm saying this was on the news today. Are you saying that these people are mistaken? Are you saying that they, you saying, that, are you saying that they're mistaken? The three people that they interviewed on ABC News with George Stephanopoulos this morning, are you saying that they're incorrect? I'm saying that I don't even want to answer that question, <laughs> you know, because it's it's a uh, obvious answer, and it's one of those answers that mm -hmm. that is not going to affect anybody because anybody who thinks that the election was stolen, they think it because they're unreasonable, and my answer isn't going to make them reason. You don't think that any you don't you don't think that any elections I'm gonna generalize you don't think that any elections in the United States have been systematically stolen. No. If one has, they all have. <laughs> so you're saying so I mean this this is this is what former President Donald Trump is saying. Now I'm saying is to the people out there, you know what that's up for them to decide. But in your opinion, hey, hey, actually, brother, your background looks great. Your background, you know, what you're streaming with StreamYard. Then you he's streaming with StreamYard, and I can't, I am too. And you know what? I'm gonna put my link to StreamYard and you join StreamYard, and you know what? You'll help the Underground Railroad television show by getting get, so we can get some donations. Okay, but you're saying is the individuals that are saying that that race was stolen, was stolen, okay, uh, by the U.S. government to put President Joe Biden in office. They're incorrect. They're out of line. This that Half of the nation believes that. Go ahead. No, half of the nation is sticking to that story. Okay, okay, okay. They believe they believe. No, they, no, no. I think we have to be truthful, even when we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. We have to be honest, even in conversation. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, truth well, in you conversation. Don't, truth in well, conversation, I mean, if I might well, add. Yeah, there, there is no one but mm -hmm. the most extremely mentally defective that actually believe this election was stolen. Mm. 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 Believe, believe that believe, you know, I, I understand what you you know what half of half of America is claiming of, uh -huh. that the election was stolen. Okay. Hey, if you like this broadcast, you know what on your social media platform, you know what go ahead and press share. You so people that are just tuning in, we're talking about who would better be a better choice for the president in 2024, with whether it be Donald Trump or be um Joe Biden. Now I'm gonna slip, slip when I said Joe Biden. I, you know, I'd like to ask you something. Um, blacks historically they started out in the Republican Party. And they left the Republican Party and became Democrats. Is it surprising to you? I was looking at the polls today. Okay. You may not believe in polls. Some people don't believe in polls. They'll say there are more blacks. I think it is 30% that are shifting towards voting and supporting former President Donald Trump. First of all, do you believe it? And if you don't believe it, let me know why. If you do believe it, let me know why. Please, brother. Well, first of all, the Republican Party that we now have is not the Republican Party that we then had. Mm -hmm. So 
it's not the same party. So mm -hmm. it's it's wrong to compare. Okay. Uh, at the same time, you could say the same thing for the entire South used to mm -hmm. be Republican. So parties change, politics change. So how much are people changing though? Mm. You know, I, I really don't think that uh in 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 very key areas, I I, I don't see where African Americans have changed. Okay. So so I, I are you saying that you are you saying like the news polls that they put put up on television? illustrating that there are some blacks that are starting to Af african americans are starting to gravitate towards former president donald trump are you saying that they're inaccurate i'm saying that politics is pretty hideous mm -hmm. yeah because it's not politics is anything but honest in fact mm -hmm. the definition of politics should be this mm -hmm. justice by or the appearance of justice mm -hmm. by other means by mm -hmm. unjust means mm -hmm. so it's like it's basically the um said goal of obtaining a standard of justice without mm -hmm. actually doing any justice yes so with um it's so our politics become kind of kind of strange in that sometimes they there's this thing that they call how they how do they phrase it wagging the dog or something like that and mm -hmm. that's kind of okay. and that's kind and that's kind of how uh people's minds are treated when it comes mm -hmm. to politics mm -hmm. all right so you know they basically tell telling us how how to think and a lot of times you know people fall into that trap so you so you're saying is these po these exit polls and all these things these are inaccurate and there's there's no no there's you would say there's no validity to it whatsoever. No. Well, I mean, not only do I think there's no validity to it, even when you listen to the numbers that they are using, mm -hmm. be, uh, it they don't numbers the numbers that they're using show that what they're saying is invalid but yet they press ahead with these false narratives anyway for example they had this false narrative that african-american men was um, uh, leaving the democratic party in record numbers mm -hmm. and and that's what they said they focused to stay right there african-american mm -hmm. men I mm -hmm. leave in the Democratic Party in record numbers. Okay. And then when they went and looked at the numbers, the it went from something like 5% mm -hmm. uh African American men voting for voting Republican to mm -hmm. 6% to 6%. Mm -hmm. So that's 1%. That's so that's a exaggeration mm -hmm. over a number that is probably within the margin of error. Mm -hmm. But then <clears throat> later on, they expanded the story and said that African-American women are voting for the Republican party mm -hmm. uh, in record numbers. And mm -hmm. then the numbers they used was, uh, it went from like 4% to 5%. Oh, well, wait a minute. After you get through. so, it appears as though what you're saying, you appear to be saying like Donald Trump to a certain. It's fake news. Fake news. Is that what you're saying? You say it's news. fake news. Huh? Fake news. So, 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 again, they went 
and got the numbers for African American women voting Republican. It was four and it went up to five. And again, it was the same story. African American women now is African American women, you know, are voting for somebody said they can't hear. It's probably the music. Is that your background music? No, no, that was something I did. Or that was something I did earlier. Go ahead, brother. I still so, hear it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, in the, it's low in the background. Okay, okay. Okay, go ahead. But they went um they went from hold on one second. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, so that was the numbers for African American women, you know. So now they've switched from African American men specifically are voting Republican at record numbers to African American women. And then the numbers were slightly different, vaguely very di bare barely different. It was like they was four percent at first, and then with Trump it was five percent. So again, what I think is probably within the margin of error. They're trying to make a news story to affect the minds of people and have people think, yeah, you know, it's, it's no different than when they have a, uh, a product coming out and then intentionally, intentionally create a shortage where people are standing outside for their product. And then people are standing outside in this long line for this product. And it must be valuable because people are waiting in line. So they've yeah. set the whole scene. But 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 if you if you're making that statement that the polls are false news, how can not their election been false news? This is a statement that you just made, and I I would like some type of clarification. You said it was impossible about the election. That was that could not have been fake news. But the polls that are coming up about black people joining the Republican Party and want to abandon it that is fake news. Can you can you give me some? Please, how, how can I'm trying to understand? Let, let me let me help I'm you out. To understand. Let okay. me help you out. Let me okay. help you out. <laughs> okay. If the whatever, if the news says the election is stolen, okay, okay, mm -hmm. and it is stolen, it's not fake mm -hmm. news. If they say okay. it's not stolen and it's not stolen, it's not fake news. They're just reporting. <laughs> Oh, so man. the I mean, question you appear, you appear to be saying two things. No, you're, you're mixing you're, you're mixing is, up two things. You're saying on the statistics, it is a false narrative. That is what you no. are saying. Right. So instead, okay. when they so when they get if you're saying it's a false narrative on that, why can't it be a false narrative over the election? I don't give me some clarification. I'm not saying one. I'm 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 bringing this up for conversation. Okay, because I'm dealing with definitions. Okay. Narrative is like perspective. Right? Mm -hmm. So when they say uh five percent of African American men voted Republican in the previous election, we can assume that's true. Mm -hmm. Right? If we assume that's true, and I I don't think that's up for I don't think that's something we're debating, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I I'll buy that one. Um but that's never the question the question was never is are these numbers factual in this so when it came to those numbers we weren't arguing whether or not those numbers were factual what mm -hmm. we were arguing is what the numbers mean we were assuming the numbers to be right five percent mm -hmm. in the previous election of african-american men voted republican okay fine mm -hmm. seems reasonable mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. in this election they voted six percent fine seems reasonable the, but the narrative they said was we're voting republican in uh record numbers like we're just leaving the democratic party in droves Not black son. so i accept the numbers i reject the narrative mm -hmm. okay so i accept the new story in terms of the facts presented mm -hmm. i just don't accept the meaning that they give to the facts okay so okay. when it comes to the election i accept the facts they can't be lying on it i got it. i got it okay. i'm saying that they're not okay because i mean 
Why, they, why, but they lie on the they lie on the they lie on the statistics of African Americans coming to no the they not Party. they not <laughs> which you, is you, more you, than you, five you are mixing you are mixing no now they're I'm not asking. lying they're not oh. lying okay okay they're so, exaggerating mm -hmm. okay they're they're pushing a false narrative about the facts. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what, man? Um, I'm talking about global politics. You know what, the Ukraine. You, for, for, I mean, President Donald. I'm mean, going to say President Donald Trump. Damn, but uh, yeah, yeah, Joe yeah, Biden. Wishful thinking. <laughs> it's going to happen. But anyway, oh, uh, you hope. I don't know why you hoping, but yeah, you know, I, hey, I, okay. I don't, I don't hope. I, I'm, I'm just straddling the fence. Yeah, because, you, you need to get what, off that fence. Because, yeah, because you know what, I gotta you tell you're gonna get some I gotta, I, I gotta tell people out there. You know what? That no matter who wins president, my world is gonna be all right. I have to, I have to be honest. But, um, you know, Johnny, I like to add, I like to ask you a question. You know what? The handling of Ukraine and the United States of America giving away millions of dollars to the ukraine okay millions Just, i don't think so okay millions to the no. ukraine no i don't think do, so do you think that joe biden is right in influence the congress and senate to give more money than should the united states had ever been involved First and foremost, I disagree with your numbers. Okay, they were just they were just fictitious numbers. But All right, let's, let's be realistic and talk about billions and not millions. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, you know, I'm not a person that uh that wants to be political, mm -hmm. right? You know, we can have political commentary because this is something important to each individual, important to the nation, and is relevant to our lives. And mm -hmm. as a minister, I know that this is relevant. So, you know, I do talk about it and I wouldn't, uh, I think that it has spiritual relevance. Mm -hmm. But, you know, on the natural side, it has natural relevance. So, yeah. Uh, when I when I think about my uh, perspective on world affairs and international mm -hmm. government, mm -hmm. without trying to pick sides and promote some very narrow worldly agenda, mm -hmm. I do look at it from a very natural standpoint and see what i think is wise naturally speaking mm -hmm. so as i began to speak earlier about uh what makes a country great if there is a great country or could be a great country in this world make america great again Go ahead, it's, it's it, it'll be based on stability and consistency mm -hmm. so when I think about, you know, who I would prefer to be president, mm -hmm. um, I vote for Jesus. <laughs> you know, uh, I wish he was on the ballot, right? No, but he wouldn't. Even, he wouldn't even put himself on the ballot because he's not a political choice. Yes. But uh, at the end of the day, what? And I do vote. I mm -hmm. don't put much value in, in it. I do it because I think that I'm just not comfortable not voting. Yes. I'm not comfortable with having a spiritual outlook like some have where they actually mm -hmm. preach against voting. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that's kind of uh, backward. Yes. You know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but you know, I think it's kind of backward. Now, the thing is, you sh shouldn't be campaigning. You shouldn't be out there, you know, 
invoking angels from Africa and from Spain, you know, over an election. Mm -hmm. But when I consider who I'm going to vote for, mm -hmm. I think about the stability and consistency of the country. So the question I have to now ask myself, which mm -hmm. is kind of ridiculous for our nation based mm -hmm. on our history, is this man going to facilitate a peaceful transfer of power? <laughs> yes. That's one that's one of the main questions. Yes. Is the th is he going to be bombastic and is he going to be tyrannical? Mm -hmm. Is he going to be authoritarian or is he just going to be a good manager of resources? Yes. And people. Yes. Yes. So but Mm -hmm. When when I look at those now, each candidate has flaws on either one of those issues. Yes. But I think there's only one candidate that has shown the propensity to uh, yield to the peaceful transfer of power. And the other one has shown the opposite. <laughs> yes. Yes. But I'm saying, you know, we're getting back. Do you think that President you, um, Joe Biden he is handling the Ukraine issue? Right. So, so, yeah. right. Okay. Now, with regards to that, so, I, I, and, th and this is why I mentioned that. I kind of went around the block. Thank you for bringing me back in. But, Again, I, I I'm I stick with the point I made about stability and consistency. Mm -hmm. With um, when it comes to our foreign policies, mm -hmm. that does affect our stability and consistency. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm not ignorant of world politics. Yes, I, I, I'm not one you know, to be out there campaigning and all of that. But I, I am aware of world politics and foreign policy and how they affect us. Yes. And just, and it, look, just as a man with a natural man with uh, some, some biases, I'm not, I'm not even going to sit up here and say, I don't have any biases. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm always, you know, i prefer whatever makes America more stable and yeah. uh, more consistent economically, uh, even militarily, uh, and socially. That's what yeah. I'm for. So yeah. when, when I look at the system that Russia has, mm -hmm. so you, that's, that's how one can think about that. When you look at Russia and the politics and the foreign policies that it has, mm -hmm. you know, you, you wonder if, um, you know, Hey, do you want that type of policy to become pervasive in, in the world? Do you want Ukraine to be led by a person that seems not to have any respect for human rights and the rule of law? Mm hmm to have his influence spread from the Ukraine to Georgia, to Azerbaijan, to Kazakhstan. Yes. Uh, I mean, and then what next? Finland, Sweden, Poland. Right. So, you know, when I think about those things, I'm like, okay, I understand uh, the politics. I understand NATO's relations and their perspective on it. And mm -hmm. I can't, I won't, uh, in, in my natural, mm -hmm. I, I would rather that NATO, uh, prevails in that contest, just personally speaking, just, you know, so Joe Biden is doing, basically he's doing the correct thing. So the, the, the narrative, uh, the solution that 
former president Donald Trump gives that, um, you know what, that we should not be supporting and giving that capital towards the Ukrainian conflict of war against Russia, which Ukraine was annexed from. Basically, former president Donald Trump is taking the wrong position in your opinion. It's the wrong opinion. It's the wrong, he's taking the wrong, um, that's the wrong course. I think he's take. I, to be honest, I think it's a foolish course. I think it's a course that's not unlike um, a lot of the world in World War II in regards to Germany. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's some of the Balkan states or some of the North Atlantic states. Mm. They, uh, many of them initially took the wrong posture of pacifism and just allow germany to steamroll countries and invade one country after another so yeah i mean because actually it imagine imagine without u.s help okay ukraine would have been overrun by now mm -hmm. and who would be next mm -hmm. so it's just, very, very it's, likely poland mm -hmm. would have been next mm -hmm. It's justifiable to give the capital. Former President Donald Trump is taking the wrong narrative I, from your perspective. You know, I like to ask you something about the um, borders. Um, it, it, it appears as though Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, is basically, he might as well say he's for open borders. If anybody is coming across the borders and being able to go to sanctuary cities like Chicago and New York, with impunity with no problem okay um would you say that that is the right uh role to take the actually you might as well take down these borders what what do you do you think that uh joe biden is wrong for that and do you think that he's right well i think that uh we have if, if you ask me on a fundamental level, what I think about borders, mm -hmm. I would say they really have no, uh, foundation in right and rightness. You know, it's, it, you can't, it, you can't fundamentally justify borders. Mm hmm and why so do I say that? Waters at all. I get it. I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay. And, I, and I say that because God created this earth mm -hmm. for man to dwell in. And he said to, you know, take dominion over the earth, replenish, be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. He didn't say stay right here. He didn't say keep those people over there. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's my fundamental perspective but dealing with reality yes that god respects yes. borders okay. okay because at one time he used and operated through a nation that yes. had borders yes so that lets me know that you know god has respect unto it even though you know over in romans it says i beseech you therefore brothers by the mercies of god that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy mm -hmm. acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service mm -hmm. um and be not entangled in um this world i'm paraphrasing but be ye uh transformed by the renewing of your mind and it goes on to say, prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That lets us know that God has a will, but there's different types of wills that he has. Yes. In other words, he has a divine will, which is that perfect will, but mm -hmm. he also has a permissive will, which is the acceptable will of God. So God has accepted mm -hmm. what man has in place put in place which are borders mm -hmm. so within the and, and within the framework of borders you have laws and we know that god is has validated having law 
Mm -hmm. And those laws apply to the border. Okay. So a nation has a right to have laws and borders and apply those laws to the borders. Mm -hmm. So the persons, the citizens, U.S. citizens and yes. politicians, usually they're not sincere about it, but that are calling for the respect of the border are not wrong. Okay. Okay. So, so, what, so it, it essentially, okay, are you saying that, I'm not going to say the scenario that we are discussing, that Donald Trump is former president donald trump is saying that we should have secure we should have secure borders no one should be able to walk into the united states that has not followed the proper protocol absolutely because again i think people are stuck in the fundamental that i first uh spoke on yes. and they're you know they, they're right that's a radical that's extreme that's a radical extreme to think just because this is a fundamental that it is wise for the present time and circumstance that we're in mm -hmm. that it's it's ridiculous to have the idea that and especially when people are insisting on this idea of a borderless society yeah that's a fundamental of, but the problem is when you don't have the same reality in which that fundamental exists. So the, ex you know, when God created us, there was no borders. Mm -hmm. And and just for this, you know, I'm I'm perceiving these biblical intellectuals that may be listening right away mm -hmm. and say, "Well, God put the man in a garden, mm -hmm. and that had borders." Uh, it had the border of the arable land. Yes. Right. So it was confined to an area that was conducive for the natural part of man's life. That's why God said, replenish the earth. Why? Yes. What that means to replicate what you see. That being that it was the assignment of man to make all of the earth habitable. Yes. And if we had maintained our status with God, it would have been a borderless society, but mm -hmm. it would have been a just population, a just and honorable population. You know, mm -hmm. whereas the scripture, scripture says, do justice, love mercy and walk humbly with your God. That's how mankind would have been under that circumstances. Borders uh, would not have been necessary, but we don't live in that reality. So, you know, former President former President Donald Trump is right. And my, my, my question in regards to that, you have sanctuary cities within the United States of America, okay? And there are people that are being flooded in. First of all, I don't blame them for wanting to, be, to leave that hemisphere where Mexico, Central America is located because of the, the problems that they are dealing with, with corrupt government and gangs and all this. My question is to you, there are people within the community of Chicago, New York, and California that are angered that these people, our individuals, are coming into their communities and they're unchecked we don't don't know who they are and where is the money all of this money and resources coming from so at some point mm. their property taxes are going to have to go up which means rent has to go up and they believe that it is unfair it's not just but i understand again the individual that's coming from a different he hemisphere that's trying to escape the tyranny but they believe that it is unfair they're mad they're angry about it and um former president donald trump is feeling the fire but do you think do you think it's justified for these people in chicago new york to be angry or to be despondent about capital being used for someone that has come in the united states 
and not following the proper protocol and getting resources. Well, I think that we can look at the situation mm -hmm. and, and physically understand that what's going on makes no sense. Mm -hmm. So anytime you go to the police station, uh -huh. and you get all the Chicago police stations and you see people sleeping outside with blankets and then later on tents and the children are living outside the police station, some on the inside of the police station. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's like if you have a two bedroom house, mm -hmm. you shouldn't invite a family of 24 over your house mm -hmm. to spend the night. Yes. All right. So that's a very fundamental. And so we're obviously getting that wrong. Mm -hmm. And so that goes back to what I, I think was the first question that you asked. Mm -hmm. uh, you asked me, I believe, what I thought about Joe Biden. Yeah. He has a characteristic that is common to politicians, mm -hmm. which is arrogance. Okay. You, you know, how is it that you, I mean, you keep, they keep quoting the line says a government other people by the people mm -hmm. for the people mm -hmm. so if that's the case how can you declare chicago the city that you represent as the head of the government local government how can you declare us a sanctuary city as when the people of this city have not spoken but, but you know what that that is not true harold washington is the one that imp that implemented um sanctuary city harold washington did that but go ahead okay oh um clifton did i i didn't say who said it okay he imp okay <laughs> i didn't say who said it who well, i'm just, saying is to blame what you saying i was saying you were saying i was saying who initiated it it was harold washington yeah, who was the and, first and black and mayor and of chicago and nothing united. changes and nothing okay. changes mm -hmm. I'm, you know i still stand on what i just said that you know he didn't have see but at the same time now that was a, a mistake of his you know uh and i would say that has some uh smell of arrogance to it yet and still mm -hmm. however when he said it Mm -hmm. It wasn't the same as when Lori Lightfoot said it. Who was the mayor of Chicago? For people that don't know, that don't live in the United States of America, you know, and Lori Lightfoot was the mayor. Go here, brother. But if I recall correctly, I'm pretty sure when Harold Washington said that, it was based on one immigrant one 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 immigrant uh i could i, I doubt I, it could it could have been a family i doubt it but i think it was this one immigrant who came to the u.s and i believe immigration and custom enforcement was looking for him they finally found him but some people helped her hide in a church okay but i'm but what i'm asking you is, hold on let me finish okay so so she went and hid in this church and the priest I believe it was a priest that mm -hmm. was protecting her they you know they didn't want to violate the sanctuary and just go in and take her mm -hmm. so they you know was trying to be respectful but mm -hmm. The priest was breaking the law by harboring her mm -hmm. and it became a national issue and i believe that's when harold washington said that we're a sanctuary city but that was a very narrow situation it wasn't what we have now okay i'm at but you know go back to what i was gonna say. do you think it is justified for people that live in chicago and new york okay in california to be anger to be upset and bitter 
because their property taxes will go up because their group of people that came into the country that did not follow protocol. So therefore the mortgages are going to go up because the property taxes are going to go up and rent is going to go up. Do you think they're justifiable with that anger? Uh, it's unjustifiable when these people that are complaining about people coming into the sanctuary cities that they're inhumane. Yeah, so, oh, of course they're not inhumane. They are the people. <laughs> they are the people and their voices have not been heard. Okay. The will of the people is not being done. So uh, it's not only the property taxes going up, it's also property values going down. Oh, it's wow. <laughs> the, uh, you know, scarcity of jobs. And when I say scarcity, that me, that's speaking relatively more scarce mm -hmm. than it was before because they are hiring these illegal immigrants. Okay. Right? If, if you go into the grocery stores or the retail stores and you want to help to find the item that you're looking for, there's a good chance that the person you're talking to doesn't speak English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's disturbing. Now I can't hear you. You can't. Nah, nah, I can't hear you. Go ahead. Okay. I said that's disturbing. When you go into the grocery store, the retail stores, and these different places of business, and you're trying to get assistance, and you get no English. Right. Espanol. But you're saying they're coming to work. Are there not a lot of jobs that are available in the United States that, work, that are not being filled? because of the wages will not these people come in and pay taxes will not these people come in and help the economy will it will they not well i wish i could put those numbers together that would be an interesting study i don't have those numbers yes but the appearance of it and i it was most likely is what it appears to be Mm -hmm. is that this co cost us as citizens yes. uh if in no other way in terms of whether this is going to be an employee market or employer market yes so yes. so with the influx of immigrants illegal immigrants i might add if you are hiring them then what you're doing is enlarging as one might argue, unjustly enlarging the labor force yes. and changing the balance of power between employee market and employer market and making it more of an employer market. And then that drives down wages. So you have wages down, taxes up, property values down. Oh, wow. Wow. But can you, in essence, but can you blame the people that are fleeing and tearing? wanting to make come a bit to wanting to make a better life by coming to the United States for them themselves and that you can you blame them? Can you blame I, I, them? I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't I, I mean I wouldn't I mean I wouldn't blame them because you know <laughs> you know it's hard it's hard I'm sure it's hard out there it's pretty uh from what the news I have that I've looked at regarding Venezuela it's pretty rough. It's, it's tough. So, no, I, I wouldn't blame. No, I don't, I don't blame. So what, what, so what is what is the solution? What is the solution? You say, first of all, so you agree with Donald, former President Donald Trump. This is not a Donald Trump commercial. We're making a comparison. Okay. You agree with his overall, the overall policy of the people following the proper protocol to come into the United States of America, not just coming in at liberty and will. You know, um, yeah, um, yeah, with the policy, even though I know his, he's not sincere, the policy specifically, yeah, you have to obey laws. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if there's a stop sign, you must stop. Yes. And you know what? Um, that, that, when, when you really, okay, when you sit, really sit down and make an assessment, and you've already 
said this, I would like for you to reiterate that because there are people that are looking on social media, even though it's a one right here. I'm talking about in StreamYard because we coming on Twitch and other other websites, and I'm looking at the numbers and the numbers are good. I would like to think, for people that are just tuning in, could you make an assessment of both President Joe Biden and one of Donald Trump? And Tell us who do you believe would be the best steward to run the country in year 2024 when the elections happen in November? Hello? Oh, you talking to me? Yes. Wait, who I think is the best steward? No, I'm saying who would be the best steward mm -hmm. on watch? Okay, after the two the 2024 election uh in the United States of America, give us an assessment of both candidates and who do you think would be a better steward? You know why? Well, unfortunately, we always come down to as they say, the lesser of two evils. Mm -hmm. And although, you know, so I, I, I could, I could be wrong because both of them could be just as destructive as the other, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we've seen the potential of Donald Trump and his destructiveness. Yes. And his willfulness in being destructive. So based on maintaining the things both the economic and political things that keep us both consistent and uh, keep us continuous yes i would prefer joe biden because all the at the very least idiosyncratic behavior Yes. of donald trump is mm -hmm. so divisive mm -hmm. it's just very divisive it, it's it's sad i mean and but at the same time i i can't <clears throat> address trump's divisiveness yes because his divisiveness would not fly in america without the divisiveness uh, what is called the left. Yeah. So yeah. when you have the left calling for uh, some very vulgar books to be accessible uh, in public schools mm -hmm. and you're confusing the gender so that people can just make up their own gender mm -hmm. and you're allowing for all this confusion and you're just saying anything goes and you know yes. people can make up their own reality yes i think you're giving donald trump a lot of fuel to work mm -hmm. with yeah because i mean i'm i maybe i'm just being very optimistic and giving the benefit of the doubt i feel like americans are much wiser than mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. maybe i'm wrong but i feel like we're much wiser than to even though i i don't i don't know if i have a lot of proof of that <laughs> but <laughs> I, I just feel like historically we have been wiser than to be authentically support of the presidency of donald trump as, yes. as as opposed to just supporting a counter politic to what the left is offering. Okay, so the, so with Joe with Joe Biden, so it's so, so you know what essentially okay. Um some I, I believe what you're saying is if Joe Biden does get back in, the borders will be open. Okay. Well and it will I, 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 I don't know. See, because I don't really think the, I think the Republican party uses the border issue. 
because I, I really don't think they're that serious about closing the borders either. I think it's just a political football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, um, thing, but I'm saying is things with Joe Biden in the, with President Joe Biden in there, things we essentially stay the same. But I'm gonna give my my summary. Things will essentially, if you like things just the way they are, they will essentially stay the way they are. If you, if you like that, if you're content with that, that's okay. But I think. Yeah, if, if you don't want America to be great again, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I didn't say that, but he said that. But if I feel as though with point with President Donald Trump. I admit some of it is a rhetoric, but there, I said there's nothing wrong with putting America first. There's nothing wrong with having a secure border where you have to follow protocol to come into the country and you can just go across the borders and go to a sanctuary city. I think that is wrong. I think that is wrong. I don't think it's wrong to put America first. I don't think it's wrong to make an attempt. I said to make an attempt to give, to bring jobs back to the United States of America. I don't think that that's wrong. But again, some of it may be re- may be um, rhetoric. Okay. It made exactly. me rhetoric. Slogans. You know, I, I was I, I I was I was listening to um Minister Farrakhan, uh, Minister Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam on YouTube. And he was um talking to talking about former President Donald Trump. He said, damn it, bring them on, bring them on, because it may make people of color come together. Bring it on. Because he's not lying about the false news. He's not lying. Hmm. Okay. Because the false news is put out there to feed the people things that don't even matter. But I was just, it was just an interview that I heard with Minister Farrakhan. He said, Donald, bring it on. Bring it on. And he, he didn't say it in a hateful way. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He said he is exposing, he said he's a what is it all? Um, he said, Farrakhan, he said, he's exposing a part of America that is here. Bring it on. And it, it was just a very, very interesting interview. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to analyze that and get commentary to that one day. And, you know, not with the Nation of Islam or respect the Nation of Islam, but it was just some. I thought it was some valid points, but if you if you like things just the way they are, vote for Joe Biden. Vote for him. You know, if 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 you want things the way the bad that's happening to be accelerated to be multiplied, mm-hmm. I don't know. You might have a choice there too. Yeah. I mean, if you want, if you want it worse. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You might have a choice there too. Yeah, man. I mean, Joe Joe Biden to me, you know what? He, in my opinion, he's a good man, but I think that he has lost some of the facilities, and I, I I admit I have lost some of my facilities. But, but you as, ain't president. It, yeah, and as yeah as Johnny has said, I'm not the president of the United States of America, and I think. And I believe in my heart that there are smart world leaders. World leaders are sharp. They're smart. Not all of them. They're sharp. And I believe that um, by them knowing that, I believe that they, some of them have taken advantage of that because they know that they can do things with impunity, almost impunity. Like flying a spy balloon over the United States of America, and you know what? And it be no retribution whatsoever. But I think, you know what? The brother, the brother got a different view, and it's good because I don't think that China would have done that without 
considering and calculating that there would have been repercussions for those actions. That's what well, I, I mean. Why, why fly? I'm using that as an example. Okay. Why fly a spy balloon over the U.S. to get secrets when you could just ask the president? <laughs> I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. And. It, 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 but Donald Trump is sus pre former President Donald Trump is susceptible because when he says he didn't believe our own CIA, it, it was Vladimir uh, Putin when it was collecting information, he said, "Well, I believe what Vladimir Putin said." You, you know, believe the uh, head of the FSB, I think it's called now, which is formerly the KGB. The KGB. Believe, no, it was used to be called the KGB. Now I believe mm -hmm. it's the fsb mm -hmm. you believe the head of the fsb over your own cia <laughs> I just, I understand. So that, that makes my voting choice a lot easier yes yeah yeah but like i say if you want much of the but again if you want much of the same go ahead and vote for joe biden i'm not gonna say joe biden president joe biden okay but if you want, I believe if you want somebody that truly, truly wants to put America first, because this is a commercial. If you want to put America first. I believe. Vote for Jesus. Plus, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but make America great again. But I don't agree with everything that Donald Trump has done. I don't agree with. Uh, um treating women like that i don't believe in a defamation um court case that he lost and he's going to have to pay 82 80 83.2 million dollars i don't believe i don't believe in that but i just happen to believe i believe that he's a stronger man i believe that who, 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 uh, 83.3 million he lost a defamation case to a young lady that it's alleged that he did things to her that were unbecoming. Yeah. And he said things that damaged her character. And wait, 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 wait. Let me let me let me say something to that. Uh-huh. See, one of the things, you know, we're talking about make America great. You know, <laughs> and, and this is something that makes you realize that this that that's nothing more than a slogan. Because the thing that's supposed to make America great are laws. The thing that is that is supposed to make America great are freedoms. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, amongst Drake those, what's the doodles? Okay, I know you live in Chicago. Thank you, my brother, my sister. Thank you. Go oh, yeah, brother. Yeah, so, uh, you know, one of the things that's supposed to make America great is, is are, are the freedoms and, you know, the freedom to be secure in your persons, the, the freedom of speech, et cetera, et cetera. So, <laughs> it, you know, th this is a problem I have a, a, a lot, right? You know, whether, no matter where we are, national, on a national level, on a church level, mm -hmm. we have these documents these founding mm -hmm. documents these founding principles these founding books that dictate uh what's right and what's wrong mm -hmm. but we always we don't do it unless there's a law to make it happen when the law is based on principle supposed to be anyway based on mm -hmm. principle Mm -hmm. And that's what we say. We say it's based on principle, but mm -hmm. we always violate these principles until someone come up with the force of law. Okay. And I'm saying that to say this, that how do we not know that it's a violation of a person's freedoms? Mm hmm and many of them, including the freedom of speech, the freedom mm -hmm. to be secure in your person, 
to charge someone to be able to sue someone for defamation for by because they refute your alleged allegations mm -hmm. that's a fundamental of freedom of speech that if someone accuses you of something you have a right to say no i didn't yes yes okay so this when while we talk about all these different regimes and like russia and all these different countries around i know <laughs> right we talk about china and how they have a lack of that is a total asinine <laughs> lack of freedom to tell somebody who's a, a alleged to have committed a gross crime as this and you're not you don't have the freedom to say no i didn't yes and that yes. becomes that's uh what slander what are they calling it defamation, yeah, that's, mean, defamation. That's, that's, that's defamation that's that's like good gestapo type stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean i mean you when, when you talk when you talk about freedom brother the united the american people's freedom have been taken away from them through the patriots act I read an article yesterday. Do you understand that the NSA, okay, this was in Google's news yesterday, I collect buying information from major uh, in a, internet providers from American people, and they have been buying information and collecting information for years. Oh, they're, they, buying, they're buying it? They're mega data. Mega data. They're you buying they're, mega data. Yes. You saying they're buying it? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. I mean, that's a new one. I, you know, last I checked, they were just going in and demanding it, and you know, <laughs> either stealing it or demanding it. No, but it said it said in the article that they have Eric Snowden uh, uh, brought brought to attention that oh yeah these telephone calls have are being monitored and you know what but the article in Google's news said that the NSA is buying information from providers like Bing and Firefox and by the, and they're using that information and some some believe that that information is being weaponized and see we talk about china collected information okay because we're actually doing the same thing but it's not it's not on the level where is when we go outside our doors there's facial recognition you know there's are facial you sure about that <laughs> i'm not sure about that <laughs> i'm not sure about that but in america we are losing our civil liberties and, and you know what we need shows like yours and like mine to bring awareness and you know what but it is it is hard to bring awareness when there's just certain things that you cannot say because mm -hmm. when you are on certain platforms you just can't say it you don't want to jeopardize your platform but actually <laughs> they're still in control still in yeah control. yeah i mean that that's something that you know i'm realizing more and more mm -hmm. you know that yeah this whole idea of freedom of speech is it's, it's um <laughs> it's a lie it's a lie <laughs> you know it's like you have the freedom to speak if you agree yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? And, and it's a sad situation. I, I was just comparing it to China, the regime of China. But like I say again, do you understand? As soon as you walk outside your door, they have facial recognition. And if you jaywalk, mm -hmm. that would be a strike against your friend. Yep. And I think that this, at some point, is coming to America. I think it's already here. Yes. Why yeah, you say that? I, I mean, the way that they do these credit scores, it's like, you know, you can, you know, pay all your bills mm -hmm. and, you know, on time and your credit score don't change. Yeah. 
So they doing something that's um not that's not right. No man, I mean there are things that are going on in America. You know what I? I could keep. I'm going to continue to do shows for as long as they allow, allow me to do to disseminate information about disparities and disparities that are going on locally, nationally, and globally until they cut me off. But I do understand that these these broadcasts are being monitored by certain people when you talk about things that are uh, political hot buttons. But politically hot to the society. You know, brother was telling me he'd been in office of the NSA. He said, brother, he said they got a he said, brother, they got a room, room from here to 79th and Stony Island where they monitor, he said, where they monitor telephone calls and, and television all over the world, brother. I said, no. He said, brother, let me explain something to you. If I knew about it and I was down there, brother, it's old. Can't surpass it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So, man, you know, Johnny, you got any finishing comments and, and you know and if you could tell us where we go to your website you know this is coming on twitch facebook and youtube and i like stream because you have the ability to uh disseminate information to three platforms at the same time and the thing is you don't know who's recording these uh, recording this and all that. but it's okay but do you have any finishing comments and tell us about your show and your platform, how we can go to you, go, go, go to your platform? Yeah. So I'm Prophet Johnson. My I'm on all the major podcasting platforms as well as YouTube. And the show is called Truth. And, it's called The Joyful Sound Truth and Conversation. And basically what I do is debunk all of the doctrinal lies that has to do with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, I'm basically, I'm confronting the lies that are told by your pastor that he received from his pastor and that it has been generally accepted in the world because uh, what's happening is everybody's uh, feeling that there's you know such a uh such a great one that they can go in and change the scriptures and make it into their image and likeness and um thing is man i appreciate appreciate that let us see this my platform all we're basically going to do is talk about the news i'm a news chase i'm a news addict always have been um, have fun with it and you know have fun with it and be serious with it and sometimes i play the devil's advocate sometimes I'm like, oh wait a minute let me jump to the other side because what i'm doing is i'm looking to facilitate conversation sometimes you have to be somewhat adversary to stimulate mm -hmm. conversation. okay and, and there are two perspectives because the world does not revolve around me and when i'm being adversarial i'm being an advocate for individuals that have totally different opinions is what i am doing you know, i'm being adversarial for a purpose not just just not just for the hell of it to stimulate conversation. Nobody want to sit up and listen to the interview. They disagree with everything you say. Yeah, man. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. What's the sense of the interview? What's the sense of it? What's the sense of, what's the sense of it if I can't do a little agitating? <laughs> and you know, agitating sometimes can draw out yeah. truthful, truthful answers that people might not want to receive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I do a television show called The Underground Railroad. We come on every Saturday night at 10.30 p.m. Central Time. And podcasts. Thanks for the donation to the podcast. I will put that back in. You, you, the donations on, on StreamYard. That's another thing I like about StreamYard. Mm -hmm. 
They can give donations. And I appreciate it. And what I do is I put that right back into the platform. But I don't know about these other, uh, but StreamYard is good with me. You know, I'm going to tell you something, y'all, real quick. I didn't want to use StreamYard, and I resisted it for years, for, for a long time, because it was $25. It was one that was $15. I said, I'm going to get the one that was $15. But I had so many problems with the ones that was $15. I sat down, and I thought about it. I said, damn, wait a minute, man. You, you stand up with you consider the best platform for the love of $10. <laughs> And then I sat down and I really thought about it. You know what? The stream yard was superior. It was superior to the other one, but individuals should use what they want to use. And you could use OBS for free. OBS. But see, the thing, the reason for y'all, I don't want to use OBS because you know what? You got to type in this, you got to figure this out. But this right here, this is just, it's set up for people like me. That don't want to do the hard work when it comes to setting up things. So this is the reason that I use StreamYard, and I encourage you to investigate what you, and use what you want to use. But that's the reason that I use StreamYard because it's easy, and I don't like things that are complicated. I like things that are simple and things that are good. That is the reason. So you know, my link will be in there. By the way, my link will be in there. So subscribe to it and get it, and some of that but come on back to the underground railroad platform this helps my platform to grow but that's if you like things simple but if you like obs use what you want to do as my friend top 10 says spend your money the way you want to spend your money <laughs> but this is this is easy i like things that are easy never have like things that are complicated like things that are simple and you know, I want to thank the people for StreamYard and um, the people that in, in StreamYard for your excellent green screen that you have supplied, even with you don't even need that much light. You don't even need that much light. So when I go to OBS, I got to light it up like this. I got I don't have to do that too much. I'm talking about what StreamYard. I am doing a commercial because you know what? If you join it, you're helping me. And you're helping this platform <laughs> but stream yard for me is it's a superior product to mel and i'm gonna say obs obs is a good program but if you like free go ahead but i'm lazy all right brother so you know what brother i just said to do a little advertisement here <laughs> plus we do Shay My Media Production does video production in Chicago. If you need an event that you want shot, if you want to come on the social media platform, hey, you know what? I can help you create a show. That's something that I can do. But it's going to cost. Yep. God, it's going to cost. Things in life cost. Even love has a price. It, ain't it does. Mm, yeah. How sacrifice. much love costs? It's sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> sacrifice okay okay all right <laughs> so i i can help you and like i said you can come on my platform but you gotta help me you know it's called reciprocity okay you help those that help you okay and and you know it's called reciprocation you know i'm helping you to promote your message you should be more inclined to help me not with a handshake saying that's my main man <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's called reciprocation unless we have a bartering bartering meaning i'm helping i'm doing something for your platform you're doing something for my platform see those are entirely different scenarios okay mm -hmm. but there's three ways you know but ah let me quit running my because you know what man i could talk all day i just want to be bothered with james today and i hope james see this <laughs> I mean, he's a good man. I like him, though. I like him. I like him. Dude. You be bothered with him. Feel like, sometimes you don't feel like all oh, Top 10. <laughs> so, the top, shout out to the Top 10 Club. Okay. Shout out to Marshall Brook in Chicago on 47th for Stony Island. Marshall I mean, Marshall Patel on 47th for Stony Island. Marshall Brook. 
on 93rd and Stony Island and Manum on 47th and Calvary. Islam is spreading. Okay. Do what you want to do. Okay. Any finishing comments? That's all I got. Okay, so I want to leave, leave my audience with to say good good morning, good afternoon, or uh, good evening, whenever you, whatever time you're watching this, share this because you know what you be looking at this broadcast at any part of the day. That's why I say all of them. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I think I left out one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Let me leave you the turn words of Assalamu alaikum. And you know what Ramadan is right around the corner, corner in Muslims fast for 30 days. You're looking at this before Ramadan. Beautiful. If you're looking at it during Ramadan, hey, get ready. <laughs> so, all right, brother. Um, all right. Yeah. Thank, thank you, brother. All right. Thank you. All right, brother.